Hi guys! Last year we made a video about the pop scanner from RevelPoint. In this video we will show you the new scanner from RevelPoint, the POP2. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, here we have the POP2 3D scanner from RevelPoint. Same with the POP1 released last year, RevelPoint first published the POP2 on Kickstarter and it's now available on their website. According to the manufacturer, this new scanner is more accurate, which can reach up to 0.1 mm, is capable of working at a higher frame rate and includes a 6 degree of freedom gyroscope to help reduce stitching errors. Inside the box we have a small warranty booklet, a bag with markers, black plastic for background and some blue tack. A platform with markers on it, but this is only included with the premium package that we will explain in a few minutes. Several different USB cables, a small tripod, an adapter for the scanner, a cell phone holder, a USB adapter, a small bust to test the scanner, and finally the scanner. At the front we have the sensors. At the bottom is the plastic piece for the tripod adapter, and at the back is the USB connector, a small light indicator and a button. RevoPoint has a couple of options, the standard kit and the premium. The premium also includes a turntable with the platform that we already shown, a power bank which is also a small tripod and a bag. And this is the power bank. With this it's possible to power the scanner so you don't need to use your cell phone battery. It can also be used as a tripod. The battery capacity is 5 amps. One other extra is the turntable. This small turntable is 120 mm in diameter. And at the side it has an on and off button, an LED and a USB connector. The turntable can be powered by USB or with three AAA batteries. Underneath is where the batteries go. There's also a small pad to install between the turntable and the platform. To get the scanner ready is very simple. First, the tripod adapter is tightened on the tripod. Then we need to slide the scanner on the adapter. Make sure the knob is tightened so that the scanner is secured. Next we connect the USB cable on the scanner and then on the computer. With the software installed, the computer should recognize the scanner by itself. At the back of the scanner, the blue light should be on, and when the scanner is ready to work, it becomes green. The scanning software is very easy to work with, and if you are familiar with the previous version, this one is very similar. To start a scan, we first need to click on the upper right button. Then there are a few options we need to choose from. The first one is if we want to do a fast scan or a high accuracy scan. Next is the scanning mode, 
where we can select between feature, which is used to scan parts with multiple faces, body, which is used to scan a person. With marker, we can scan parts that don't have many faces and therefore we need to use markers. With dark hair, is used when we need to scan parts that have dark colors or if we want to scan a person's head with dark hair. And finally, face for scanning faces. Last but not least is the texture. If we want to scan with color, we need to select color. If not, we select no color. Okay, once we have all the settings done, we can click on confirm. In this first example, we scanned the bus that came with the scanner. When ready, we click on start and let it scan all around the model. At the top, there is a scale with the information if the scanner is at the correct distance from the model. At the left, we can see the image from the scanner's RGB camera and also the scanner's data sensor. It's also possible to adjust the intensity by moving the sliders. The option Clip Plane is used when we want the software to ignore the base, which in this case is the turntable. Normally, one turn is enough, so now we pause the scan and change the model's orientation so that the scan can capture the remaining areas. The software will detect the new orientation and match the scan. The scanning software can also do a bit of post-processing. So after the scan is done, we can process the mesh, fill the holes, add the textures, and finally export the files. We can export as PLY, OBJ, and STL. The second software is only for post-processing, but has a few more options, so in certain cases, it can produce better results. This software also has the option to merge two models. And this is the scan result that we got. We then decided to load the file and run it in one of our 3D printers. And this is how it turned out. It actually turned out OK. The scanner was able to capture the model and its details. And the 3D printed model has basically the same measurements as the original one. We also tried other models with different sizes and levels of detail. Models with light colors are the easiest ones to scan. And here is the result. This small ceramic figure was also easy to scan, and the scanner was able to capture many of the small details. Here you can see the original one at the right and the 3D printed one at the left. 
Here we can see that the scanner was able to capture the small details of this small figure. Next, we tried scanning this moon-shaped lamp. Since it's all white, the scanner was able to scan it very easily. And here is the 3D printed version. This next model has many colors and small details. The scanned colors might be more or less the same, depending on the light, just like any other camera, and configuration in the software. Even the small details from the child's clothes have been picked up by the scanner. This next model has some dark areas on it, like the eyes, nose and feet. For those areas, the scanner had a bit of hard time to capture, especially the feet. All the details are there, but the feet are missing. For these cases, we could use the dark mode, but that will interfere with the other areas and lose a bit of detail. So there is a workaround you can try. For the dark areas, we can use some techniques to help the scanner capture them more easily. One of those techniques is using baby powder on the dark areas. Adding a coat of baby powder on the feet will cover the dark color, and this way the scanner will be able to capture everything. With the baby powder, we now have the scan with the feet included. For models like this one, that are very reflective, scanners in general are not able to detect, and the POP2 is no exception. For cases like this one, we need to use special techniques, but baby powder is not one of them. On the market, you can find spray cans like this one, for example, that are used just for scanners. The spray adds a special coat on the model so that the scanner can capture it. And since it's a very thin coat, it will not cover all the details. If you don't want to spend money with these scanning sprays, you can use dry shampoos as well. Not all of them will work and might add a more thick coat, but the scanner will be able to detect the tool with it. Like we mentioned in the beginning, you can use a cell phone or tablet with this scanner instead of a computer, and this way have a mobile solution. The kit includes the cables and the adapter to connect the scanner to the cell phone. If you use the power bank, you need to use the adapter and the two small cables. The cell phone holder is compatible with cell phones from different sizes. You can use the small tripod or the power bank to handle the scanner and the cell phone. One of the cables is used to connect the scanner to the power bank. And the other is to connect the scanner to the cell phone. The app that runs on the cell phone is very similar with the PC version. And the scanner is now ready to scan anywhere.
The challenge of scanning faces is once again to detect dark areas, like the black hair. If we select the dark hair mode in the software, the scanning settings will be automatically changed, so that the scanner can capture those difficult areas more easily. But the level of detail will be reduced. In face mode, the dark hair is very difficult to capture. In this example, it barely captured any of it. The difficulty is not only with the hair, but also with the eyelashes and eyebrows. When using the body mode, some amount of hair was captured, and with a bit of effort, it might be possible to capture most of it. If you want to scan for modeling, and not for 3D printing, adding the color to the scan helps, and produces this result. However, for 3D printing, it's better to scan with no color. When comparing the POP2 with the previous version, this new scanner is much similar in terms of shape and size, but in terms of weight, the POP1 is only 98 grams, while the POP2 is 196 grams. The new one has the additional small button at the back that is used to start and pause the scan. As for the scanning results, we can see that the POP2 can scan more details when compared with the previous POP1 model. If you want to see our video for the first model, check the video description below for the link. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and if yes, don't forget to give it a like. We will see you guys next time. Bye!